Hey, so today we're gonna to learn how to bring alpha channel video out of iClone and into DaVinci Resolve. <laughs> So Alpha Channel, if you're not familiar with it, you, you may be more familiar with it in the context of images, working with an image in Photoshop or uh, PaintShop Pro. And when you have a situation where there's transparency uh, on an image, PNG is a popular format that saves transparency. Well, that can also be done in video. It's just not quite as easy or readily available as you know an image in uh, PNG form. But there is a way to have an alpha channel, which is where that transparency information is stored. There's a way to have that be in video. Now, as you'll see as we dig into it here, iClone, the way we're doing it, we're not actually exporting video with the alpha channel in there per se. But we can get at that alpha channel info by exporting it in another way and then bringing those two things together in DaVinci Resolve. So let's dive in. So I'm on iClone 8 version 8 point something or other. And uh, it's the latest version as of the date of this recording. And I'm on DaVinci Resolve 18.5, just for reference. So really any version, you know, from 18 forward, I know for sure this is how it's done. I think it works the same in 17, but, you know, if you want to follow me step by step here, uh, be on the latest version, which is 18.5 or so. Okay, so the first thing is, let's make sure we understand what alpha channel video is. That's basically, you know, you, you might in some scenarios have something going on on the screen on iClone where it's, you know, in front of a green screen. And then you use chroma keying to key that out. But, but even in a controlled environment with animation, that can be messy. Um, it can have, you know, there can be some edges that show up. Hair is particularly difficult where hair gets really thin. You know, the key has to be just perfect. Alpha channel can be a little bit more precise when you're working with software like iClone 8. So we're going to accomplish the same effect without having to key out any color at all. And how we're going to do that is we're going to render our footage in front of a transparent background. So first thing we have to do is we have to make sure that iClone 8 is, you know, is showing us an image with a transparent background. So if you have any sky turned on or any props behind, you know, your footage that you're going to render, you want to hide those from the scene. You can do that from the scene uh, hierarchy here, and you can go through and, and hide anything like that from your scene. I don't know if you can see that. But if you've been using iClone, you know how to do that stuff, you know, to, to make stuff not show up temporarily. So we've already done that on this scene. And now we want to go up here to Edit and then Project Settings. That's going to bring up a little window like so. And you want to scroll down uh, most of the way down the window to where you get to the section for 2D background. And you want to make sure that this activate image, which is your 2D background image, that that's turned off. Um, that When that's turned on, basically anywhere where there's transparency, iClone is going to fill it in with, you know, in this case, there's some kind of a gradient image that we've got there. It's convenient when you're, you know, putting things together. But we want that gone. We don't want it there. So generally speaking, that is what your render window, your camera view with transparency enabled or, or you know, able to be done is going to look like. And we've got a short little clip here. It's about... Uh, it's about 70 frames. I'm keeping it short so that we can actually do all of this in real time and render it. Okay, so now that we know that there's no uh, nothing impeding the transparency in the scene itself, now we're going to go to render. And we do that 
There's a number of different ways to reach the render window, but we're going to do it from right here. And in my case, I've got it showing up on the toolbar on the side here. Okay, for our example here, we're going to render to QuickTime or MOV format. I'm fairly sure that this can also be done with AVI, but AVI, it would have to be uncompressed AVI. And if you've ever dealt with that, you know that's huge, especially if you're rendering out at 1080p or higher. You know, it's just going to be a really obnoxiously large file. MOV it works fine for the scenario we're doing for this test, and it may work fine for you too. So let's see. We'll set our resolution. I'm going to do it at a lower resolution just to make it uh, the render happen faster. I've turned on final render and anti-aliasing 3x3 to squeeze some good quality out of it. And I'm, I'm exporting just the range from 0 to 170. I've got those marked with some little, uh, little markers down at the bottom here, the range. And that's, that's what this range is over here. Okay, so we're going to click Export at the bottom of that render window. And we're going to save this one. I've already got some files here, but don't, don't worry about that. Just save it as some, you know, name wherever you want to save. And we're going to say Save. In my case, got to replace it because I've already done this once to make sure it works before doing it for you. So we'll wait here just a moment for this to render. Now this will work, you know, pretty much regardless of whatever complexity you've got in your scene. Ours is a real simple one here. Um, it's just a, a guy standing in front of the screen doing some idle animations uh, to keep it nice and simple. I did pick someone that had some rather high quality hair here. You know, there's strands of hair up there because in chroma keying in particular, that's that's a, a real weak spot, or it can be, where it's not going to show up well. If you've ever tried to webcam in front of a chroma screen, a green screen, you know if, if it's not perfect, the key, then you get this blob around your head and stuff. You may have done that on with Zoom's automatic chroma keying and stuff like that. So this is a, a scenario where it's going to be super, super clean particularly because it's rendered animation, but also because we're not going to have to key out anything at all by selecting a color or that kind of thing. Okay, it offers to open up the video for you now in like Media Player or something. We're not going to worry about that. Now, before we get out of iClone, we're going to go right back over here to this same render window. And up near the top, you're going to see this checkbox, which says export alpha video only. We're going to tick that box. We're going to scroll right back down to the bottom. And we're going to hit export again. And this time I'm going to use a different file. I'm writing over a previous test that I did for this same thing. And we hit save. And there we go. And we'll let that render now. Essentially, what we're doing is instead of you can render I uh, you can render video with Alpha Channel embedded in certain applications. If there's a way to do that in iClone with QuickTime MOV format, I'm not sure how to do it. But I know that this way works, which is we're rendering the video first. That's the first render we did, and then we're rendering. Basically, the, the contents of the alpha channel as a mask. Uh, a, a mask, it, you know, if you've worked in iClone or Character Creator, you've probably dealt with files that are, uh, you know, a black and white scale and opacity maps, for example. It's the same concept, right? So we're not going to worry about opening that. Uh, I'm going to untick this box so I don't accidentally leave it checked for my next render, and then we're going to save and get out of iClone. Now, if we go over now into DaVinci Resolve, I've already got a video project open here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop our video 
I'm going to actually drag it into this channel so that it doesn't overwrite my audio down there. We have no audio in this in this clip. And you see now that you see that we cannot see through the video at this point. It's not behaving in a transparent manner. Okay? So the first thing that we need to do um, is switch over. We, we need to go ahead and select this clip and then switch over to the Fusion tab. And you see we have that clip loaded up now. Fusion is the module in DaVinci Resolve where you can do things to basically transform clips in various ways. It's a very, very powerful part of the software. Um, and frankly, it's, it's kind of complicated. So right now what's happening is we've got Media 1 in. That is our, essentially, that's our clip that we see here on the screen, the clip that we rendered out of iClone and is in here. And then we've got Media Out. Right now it's just a straight line from... It's just the clip, and nothing happens to it. It just gets sent to the output. So we're going to add something to this chain to make something happen to the video before it gets to the output, which, you know, puts it back in our editing queue there. So we're just going to right-click on some empty space here in this little flowchart area, and we're going to choose Add Tool, and then we're going to choose Matte, that's M-A-T-T-E, and then Alpha Multiply. And that's going to pop in a little module here for us. And this is basically a thing that's going to process our clip. So before we do anything else, let's go ahead and put it into the chain. We're going to grab the end of this arrow that's running from media in to media out, and we're going to take it and drop it on the input end of Alpha Multiply. And then we're going to drag this output end of Alpha Multiply over to the output. So even though it's not doing anything yet, it is now in the chain. And now we just need to tell it what we want it to do. So I'm going to drag and drop the alpha channel clip, the one that's just the black and white. We're going to drag and drop that into the window here. Okay? And then we're going to take the output from that clip, which you can see the outline of it right here. It's this, this white figure over a black background. That's our alpha channel mask. So we're going to take the output from that and bring it into the input on top of alpha multiply and drop it right there. Now there's not an immediate effect because we have to, we have to kind of tell the alpha mal multiply module what to do with this input. So let's click to select on alpha multiply one. And then you'll see over on this side of the screen here, this is the settings panel for our Alpha Multiply 1. And there's a few things that we're going to adjust here to affect the behavior. These are the defaults that popped up for me. It should be the same defaults that pop up for you. But basically, we want to make sure Multiply by Mask is checked. Then we want to go down to Channel. And as much as you might think we want to choose Alpha here, that's actually not correct because this this video that we're using for a mask doesn't actually have alpha channel info as such in the video. Instead, it's using a black and white mask to pull that off. So we're going to change this to luminance. And there you go. This checkerboard background here shows us the transparency that's being enacted from those changes that we did. So the two things we changed our multiply by mask, we checked that, and we changed channel to luminance. Now if we go back over, if we go back over to our edit screen, we'll see that those changes have been applied automatically here in the edit window. And we've got our transparent guy, well he's not transparent, but his background is, over the front of the footage just as we wanted it. So that is how to do that in DaVinci Resolve with iClone footage. Happy creating and we'll see you next time.
Thank <laughs> you.